Why don't you come inside? It's my day off. I'm gonna make some chicken for you. Come on. I mean, on a normal day off for me, I like still want to shoot, get some reps up, but I try to do something fun with my family, hang out with my dog. I was expecting to come get done with the season and walk into a house, but this has been my off-season crib. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me on my day off, but I'm gonna finish up my day hanging out with my friends. My way of just stress relief, my way of not worrying about football and whatnot. It is amazing to be able to wake up when I want, do what I want. Over here, I got all my awards and trophies. You guys know the coveted Challenger Games Award to the world's fastest entertainer. So we went to this Challenger Games event and everybody was hyping up King Batch. King Batch, he ran track in college. He did this, he did that. I take off. And he's nowhere in sight. He's way behind me. So we got a couple medals from them same events. Here, right here, you know, we got my Lombardi trophies, camera gear, cameras. That's not all of them. We have a lot more put away. Lenses. That's not all of them. We have a lot more put away. Me and my mama. I love her. She's the most amazing woman in my life. We got the little breakfast drink. And then we got the little breakfast sandwich, man. Mm. Bacon, egg, cheese on a little nice, light, buttery, flaky, crushed croissant. Can't go wrong with that. Food is fuel. You got to think of your body as a Ferrari. How are you going to drive that Ferrari? Are you going to go to the gas station and put that 87 cheap gas in your Ferrari? How is it going to drive? How is it going to perform? You got to put that 93 unleaded in that thing, bro. You got to put the best of the best foods, bro. Your body will respond to whatever you put in it. Right now, I'm making a little protein shake. Like I said, you got to put that fuel in your body. 93 unleaded, no other. So we're putting some protein in our body right now. Um, everybody likes to make all these complicated smoothies and all this and that. I just go chocolate milk, protein, peanut butter. Straight to the point. A lot of protein inside of it, tastes delicious, and it's easy to make. And usually, you know, that little mixture yields me enough for two cups. So we just smash those, you feel me? Here you go, my man. Enjoy it. Cheers. Mm. Mm. Feels so good, tastes so good. You know I'm an athlete, so it is very important for every athlete to take care of their body. I like to call this the body and mind studio. I like to come in here, meditate, do some yoga, do some stretching. I'll do yoga, I'll do Pilates. I'll just do whatever I can to make sure my body is, is feeling in tip top shape so it can perform at the best of its abilities, man. I think yoga, people think as stretching, but it's really you connecting with your mind, your body and just coming to Zen, I like to call it, you know? Meditating. Oh man, and now we're at my outdoor gym. Check me out, a lot of y'all may be like, why is your gym outdoors, it's not covered? This is Arizona, it never rains, the weather's always beautiful. I'm just gonna sit here and look at the weights. Um, I'm probably not gonna work out today. I think it's essential to have a home gym, especially if you're an athlete, because if I want to work out at 2 a.m., I could come out here and pump some weights. If I want to work out at 4 a.m., I could come out here and pump some weights. I think exercise is super important, uh, not only to keep your body physically fit and moving how it's supposed to, but 
it's just a good way to stay mentally ready too. Like uh, you're in you're in a good mindset. You're in a good like role to attack every single obstacle you have in your day. You don't need that much stuff. I have a lot of things. This rack itself, you could get so much done. Dumbbells, you could get so much done. You don't need a whole fancy big setup to get things done, man. As a kid, my parents really couldn't afford to buy me $200 pair of Jordans, $160 pair of Jordans all the time. And there were literally releases all the time. All my friends would camp out at stores and, and get them and wear them to school the next day and all that. But I never had the money, so I was kind of looking from the outside. I don't know, man. I just have this obsession over shoes. If I go to the store and I see something I like, I'm going to get it. This top five, very hard decision, but first things first, the Off-White Air Force Ones bolts. These things are loud. I mean, they don't match with a lot of things, but I feel like if you can pull these off, you got some drip to you. Easy 350 V2 Zebras. These are my beaters. You can see they're a little dirty. I wear these literally with everything. Black and white, so they match a lot of outfits. These right here, I've worn them since I was a kid. They're the LeBron 8 Lowe's Solar Reds. These things are just beautiful, bro. I remember back in high school, I couldn't afford anything like this, and I would always see kids rocking them and whatnot. Like, I can't wait till I can get those one day. I won't even say what they are, I'll just let y'all see them. Mm. Mm. The Off-White Jordan 1 Chicago's. These is like 2.5 racks, bro. I wore these once, and I will never wear them again. They're staying in my collection for a very long time, and maybe when I'm 60, I'm gonna sell them for like $50,000. Who knows? Last but not least, these are probably my favorite ones, the ones that I wear the most. Tie-dye Crocs, bro. With the fur on the inside. Come on, man. These are house shoes, these are going out shoes, these are grocery store shoes, these are, put them in sport mode, skateboard, run around, hoop. Come on, bro, these are versatile and comfortable. That's my top five. And uh, thanks for watching. Coming up next, just because if I wanted to show the whole world that I can do it, my mind was so sharp. It's out. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. What's up, everybody? This is Anna Cancer, and welcome to my day off. I'm gonna feel bad, you're, I'm eating, you're just watching. Well, the biggest reason I am trying to be vegan is obviously the factory farm system and animal abuses. When I was growing up, I always thought that you know, eating more meat uh, is gonna make you stronger, faster, leaner. And after you know, doing a lot of research, well, you learn that cutting down meat, especially red meat, is going to make you leaner, stronger, and actually you heal quicker. So it definitely helped my uh, career a lot. So we are going to play the game called Spirit Ball. I'll be honest with you, I never even play baseball because we don't have that in Turkey. So this is gonna be my first experience hitting a ball with a bat. Oh God! Oh my goodness! Huh, I thought this would be way easier. There you go! Ramadan to me was so important because I was fasting since I was a little kid, like eight, nine years old. One person really inspired me was Hakim Olajuwon. He was fasting during NBA Finals. His numbers were so much better. Ramadan came during the season, and a lot of my friends were like, everyone asked me was, are you going to fast? I'm like, yeah. Just because if I wanted to show the whole world that I can do it, my mind was so sharp. So I actually ended up playing so much better than we made a conference final that, that year. Well, flying a cut is not my thing. I write poems sometimes, uh, but in Turkish, so you guys probably won't understand what it means, but I want to read, read it to you guys. The title of the poem is Without You. Yine hüzün kaplamış, o güzel yüzün. Dalıp gittin hilyalara, vurdu bir anda hüzün. Kaderim bu benim, özlüyorum seni her gün. Yalnızlık buymuş demek, sensiz geçer her güzün. It's about missing someone, it's about, you know, want to see them, but you cannot because there are so many 
things in between, so many miles, so many different kind of things. My family's back in Turkey and I haven't seen them like almost eight years now. So like writing poems like that is just like, it's just putting all your feelings and emotions into a poem. You know, till my second year in the league, all I cared about was playing basketball. And I remember my third year, there was a corruption scandal happened in Turkey and I tweet something about it. More and more I was outspoken about some of the things that are happening in my country more because there was so much human rights violations, there was so much political prisoners and journalists uh, were in the jail. Because in America, obviously, there is democracy, there is freedom, there is freedom of speech and freedom of press. In Turkey, it's not like that. If you are criticizing the government, you will end up in jail. So that's just because I was talking about all the innocent people are in the jail actually getting tortured and stuff. Um, obviously, because the platform it was going everywhere. And more and more, the, the outlets, you know, big outlets, big newspapers and stuff started to get, give me a you know, big platform. I started to give interviews, writing op-eds and all that stuff. It was back in 2016. Uh, my dad was a genetic professor and he got fired from his job. My sister went to medical school for six years. She got, she still cannot find her job. My little brother was playing basketball and he literally got kicked out on every team because of this, he carried the same last name. So my family were getting affected so much, they had to put a statement out there and saying, we are disowning Ennis. Turkish government didn't believe my family. They came to my house and they took every electronics away because they wanted to see if I am still in contact with my family or not. So that right now there is no communication because if they know that I'm communicating with my family, then they will be all in jail. And then 2017, they revoked my passport and they put my name on Interpol list. So they put your name on Interpol and whichever country you're in, that country has to deport you back to Turkey. There is an arrest warrant out there for me and stuff. So it's been, it's been seven, eight years that I haven't, you know, seen my family. America gave me so much. I am going to become a citizen in two months. I came here for basketball and go to school same time. Well, in college, I couldn't play because after I left uh, Turkey, my club team in Turkey pretty much sued me and said he's a professional, don't let him play in uh, high school or college. So I couldn't play high school, I, I played prep school. I couldn't play college. I, they made me assistant coach so I could practice with the team because NCA said you're not even allowed to practice with the team. Then I got drafted in 2011, then lockout happened. So no high school, no college and no NBA. I was just very frustrated. I'm like, dude, am I ever gonna get to play basketball again? And, you know, in America, I was very frustrated. But then lockout was over, I stopped playing basketball. The reason I knew I was gonna go top 10 because my name was on ESPN almost every day because I came here, it was a very high prospect and I was like the best player in Europe in my age. And then I was very lucky because it was a lockout year. So many of the other players pull, up, pull their name, name out from the draft. I was gonna go like top 10, all of a sudden I went to top three. When I get drafted, before my name, they said from Turkey, that made me actually very proud. And I was representing not just myself, but my family, my country. So that was probably the, one of my, you know, part of the moment in my career. The best teammate that I ever played with was Steven Adams and Russell Westbrook. And I probably put Dame in there too. Me and Steven Adams, we were like brothers, you know. Westbrook and Dame was just different kind of players with amazing leaders. Those are the type of players that like make themselves better and make everybody else better around them. That's what makes it really special. Well, today was my day off. Thank you for joining me. I had a blast. I hope you all had a blast. Uh, I'm a deep in the ocean. I'll see you later. Coming up next. I'm always on my phone, always trying to figure out what the next plan is, what I have to do next. We do dance. Uh, don't get that picture his face. <laughs> yeah, no. What's up guys, I'm John Victor Mackey. I'm a dancer, singer, actor, and most importantly, I'm a TikToker. What's important to me about my off days is definitely rest because I rarely get some, I'm always staying up late. Sometimes I'll just feel the urge at like 2 a.m. just make a TikTok. I can't explain it, but it happens. <laughs> I'm always on my phone, always trying to figure out what the next plan is, what I have to do next, especially because I get a lot of work from my phone. All I'm doing is checking my phone, posting stuff. We think he works way too hard. He's driven, he's motivated. He gets that from his dad. And, well, his, mother. and his mother. 
My bad, my bad. <laughs> my mom forced me to dance. I didn't want to start dancing, but she forced me to take all these classes. And after a while, starting to get good at it, that's when I really started to really like it, especially hip hop, because that's like my favorite style. Up until about 11 and a half, he really could not dance. But at 12, we put him in that school, he yes. just took off, kind of took a off. It was a miracle. <laughs> I'm dancing literally 24-7. I don't know when there's a time I'm not dancing or moving. I just can't really stop. It just relieves stress, especially when I just freestyle, like put on some music and let go. But my friend Mackenzie, she actually was on TikTok and she was like famous. She really got me into it. And I really started off with like funny videos and like comedy skits and stuff like that. And that's kind of how I blew up. And then after that, I made my out of there dance and that one blew up. And then after that, I just started making dances and my dances started going crazy. So then I became known as a dancer. Christmas on the Square was really fun because I knew most of the people in that. We were already super close, so it just made it even more fun. Hot Chocolate Nutcracker, I honestly didn't even know what was going on then. That was like my first year. I was really just trying to figure out what was going on. I didn't even know they were filming me like that. Yeah, that was fun. I haven't eaten all day, so let's make my favorite off-day meal. So today we're making salmon. I like salmon because it's salmon and it's really good for you. And um, so right now we have the oil heating up. Once it's ready, we're gonna put the salmon in the oil, and then we wait. There we go. I like to season it with salt, pepper, and then my favorite seasoning called Slap Your Mama. It's amazing. Mom, do you want one? Smells good. There we go. Wait, 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 wait. There. That's it. It looks fantastic. Well, we have to taste first. Well, chef, we would like to see a little more sauce on the next time, but overall, great job, chef. Thank you, chef. Great job. <laughs> <laughs> Smells good. So here we have the whole shoe collection. You guys are the first to see this. All my favorites, all my shoes I've bought over the past couple of months. These two are my fours. We got the metallic fours, and then we got the what the fours. I love 97s, as you can see, I have three pair right here. Classic Air Force ones, you have to have a pair of these in your closet or you're just weird. These are my ones, I love ones. So on my top three, that's actually really tough. All right, Turbo Greens is definitely in the top three. We got the Mochas, super clean colorway. Number one would probably be the Jesus 11s right here. I like these a lot. When I get shoes, I typically like buy a matching outfit so I don't have to go looking for it later. I got these at Cookies and Kicks, and then I got this shirt before I left that matches. And then and I put these pants with it because it has the flames on it. I need another pair of ones, and you guys know that's my obsession, so let's go to my favorite shoe store. We're with the boy Jeff Ting. Yup, about to head to our favorite spot, Cookies and Cakes. Let's get it. Hey, you see it? What's good? Nate Barr, this is my little brother. We always have a size, but he's picky. So. No, no. We only have your size because no, you shop here. As you should. What are those? Oh, okay. These are the oh, ones those. that you made fun of me for last time. I hope Here you can't goes. find anything that you like today. Wow. You disrespect. Mmm. Those are nice. Sound like a lawnmower. Mmm. <laughs> I'll get some more. Oh, that's clean, that's clean. All right, so uh, got another pair of ones to add to the collection. Got some TikToks done, did a lot of stuff. Uh, light work. Light work. Light work, and uh, yeah, thanks for coming along. I appreciate y'all for watching, peace out. Coming up next, turn our mind off from basketball every single day, and get outside and just enjoy some of that off time. During the season, this is a daily routine just to get up, head to practice, work out, get my lifts in, get my court work in, and just prepare 
for game days. I just try to be my best every single day and prepare my mind and my body. I play at the highest level of professional basketball. Um, to be at my best and to be at my peak, it takes hard work and dedication every single day. But not today. I'm Seth Curry. I play professional basketball. And this is my day off. A day off is huge, especially with the grind of a professional basketball season. Take that day, try to relax, try to recover, refuel my mind, my body. Big breakfast guy, gotta have my coffee every morning. Philadelphia is a great city, great fan base, very passionate. You can tell how much they wanna win. It's great going out there and, and trying to put on a show for them and, and taking it all in. Oh wow, that was quick. On my day off, I try to spit as much me time as possible. I like to relax, maybe get on the video games, have some fun there. And just like I said, relax my body, relax my mind and just kind of get away from the game. Um, it's a grind every day, whether it's a practice day or a game day. So we need to take full advantage of the days off. I play all types of video games. I play 2K, Call of Duty, Warzone. Yeah, I've been playing video games all my life, really. Kind of got back into it over the quarantine period heavy, but been playing since I was a youngster. Let's start in child's pose. So you're gonna come down to all fours, bring your big toes to touch, separate your knees about as wide as the mat. You know, guys who take advantage of the day off, have an advantage and Seth does a great job of that. He always takes care of himself, you know, removes himself for the game, relaxes and just tries to focus on him on his days off and I encourage it as well. Me and Spencer like to relax, kick it, turn our mind off from, from basketball every single day, do some yoga. It's very important to um, get outside and just enjoy some of that off time. Rotate your right foot to face the top edge of the mat. We're gonna do warrior two. Now bend your right knee. So you're gonna sweep your right arm back. Mm-hmm. Great, keep your right knee bent. Yeah, yoga is huge. It's, it's good for the body, obviously, but more importantly, it's, it's been good for my mind over the years of helping me relax, put me in a good space mentally so I can perform my best. Take a big, deep breath in. Reach your fingertips a little bit further in front of you until your elbows now lift off of the mat. It's good to stretch the body, relax the body. It's a good workout at the same time while um, just a different change of pace from the daily workout routine. Yoga is important because it's good for recovery. You guys get to just check out and go to their own place for a little bit. We just did some light stretching, meditating during that process, you know, focusing on ourselves and what we need to do. Yeah, days off are probably more mental than physical, honestly, just to turn your mind off from basketball at all times and get away, spend some time to yourself with your family. It's important to take those full days off when you can get them so you can maximize the days where you're working hard and putting your body through the rigors of a professional season. I'm Seth Curry, and this is my day off.